All right. So just quick, if you go into Animation Buffet, I'll put that link in the, uh, the post. You can go all the way down and you have a bunch of ball, ball, bop, ball, character, everything. There are a bunch of rigs in there. Most of them are free. If you want to go into something a bit more specific with squash and stretch, like this one's really good. Um, actually, the one with all the texture changes is really good. This guy works really well. Uh, this one, I mean, it's, it's all pretty good if you want to go that way. But for now, uh, you don't have to. So within Maya, what I usually do is I set it up like this, where I have my outliner here. I don't need this one there. It's, it's mainly it's because of the workflow at work, basically. Actually, it's not, I mean, you can do whatever you want here in terms of camera. You can do a create camera or do this type of camera. And then, then you can rename this it to shot cam, just in case you don't want to use, you know, whatever camera you have. That's basically my setup. I have the graph editor in here and then the perspective mode uh, in here. Now, for a bouncing ball, I would recommend an orthographic one. So for those who haven't used Maya, so if you're doing a bounce ball for the first time, I would do a create polygon cube. And that is going to be your um, ground plane. Because a plane from an orthographic view, you're not going to see the line. And if you've never used Maya, then it's the... This W is for translate, E is for rotate, and R is for scale, in case you want to change things. So to me, I would scale this up more like this. You can go like this, but then you're going to have to make it pretty flat. And again, you can go into panel, orthographic, side. That's the view. So you can see here that you will see what's going on here compared to if I do create poly plane and you put this low here, you can see that if I do this, and deselect it, you can't see it. Obviously, it's here in the scene, but in orthographic view, you can't see it. And that's why I take it out. So for me, this is going to be my reference ground plane for the ball. So again, shot cam, this is if you do your um, pantomime or lip sync, that's how I would do something. I wouldn't do a new camera like this. I would go uh, the create camera. So for the bouncing ball, you don't need it. It's also simply probably don't need to rename it, but I'm just going to call it ground. And I'm going to use a create poly sphere. And that's going to be my bouncing ball here. So I'm just going to rename it ball. And that's all I need. Again, you can look around here if you want to. But basically, I want to have that ball bounce like this and come to a stop. And I'm going to make this just a bit longer. And then that's that. And in terms of frame length, it's usually around 120. You want to give yourself some time, 130 frames. And that should be around it. And you can, if you play this, it's going to be boom, 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 roll, stop. Yeah, like around, around that time. The way to make this easier, I would just concentrate on the ball going up and down. And then you add the translate over. So what you can do is I want to start maybe at this height. And then in Maya, you can hit S to key everything. So for me, I have it as a hotkey to shift S. You can see on the right how this happened here. Um, you can also just create a separate key and whatever you want to do. For instance, just in this, you do a right click and key select it. Again, I have this on a hotkey, so I can just do that um, just to keep things simple. But at the very beginning, you can just key everything if you want. So I'm going to go in frame one, select the ball, key everything. And then you can start to time things out if you want to. I just set keys and I bring this down to this. And if you look at the numbers, it gets a bit complicated because you already have some, some weird um, translates and stuff like that in there. So what I would do, I would take that ball translate zero so you know that is when it's at the bottom and then you take your take this here zoom in you can take your ground plane and then move it up and then that way you know that whenever the ball is on the ground at least here it's a zero it's gonna be much easier to keep um you know multiple spots there so if that's the beginning here what i'm going to do is i'm going to key this here and it's going to be up in the air and on the lower left you can see i'm going to set a key here, put this guy back because he has already keys on there. So that's zero. And then he might go up in the air and then back to zero. 
and then up in the air and back to zero. So that's what I would do in terms of um, setting the keys. Now, again, for those who've never used Maya, if I set a key here, okay, that's my starting position, and it falls down, boom, maybe on frame 13, it's going to be at zero. And then it's going to bounce up in the air again, not as high. And now I want to go back to zero. Either you type in zero here, or you take this key, middle mouse drag over, and then set a key again. And then you can see in your, hold on, I got to deselect my channel. You can see how it's going, it's going to copy that key. So again, I can go over, it might be up in the air, go back down, middle mouse drag this one over, set key, and I copies that. So same thing if I would be up in the air, middle mouse drag over and set a key. Again, it copies that key that you have here. But again, I don't want to do that. So here it's going to bounce a bit less and then back to zero and so on. And you can see that this, this is TY, this is your translate Y. This is basically representing the, the bounciness of your ball. So if I take a drawing tool, and let's say here, it would be dong, 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 dong. that type of path and the, the arcs of the ball is basically what your TY is going to be. So if I take this drawing tool off, what you're going to do now is you're going to change the tangents. So again, for you have never used Maya, these guys are tangents. You move these around and it's going to move the curves around. Now, what you got to do is you have to think in terms of timing and what that means for the ball, right? If you play this right now, it's just going to bounce, put this in the middle, and it's not going to be very convincing in terms of the timing. So what you need to do is when something drops, it's going to be slow and it's going to accelerate as it goes down. So I'm going to hit this and then this one will flatten the tangent. You can see it's flat now and now it's going to accelerate a little bit. What you can see here, and that's the big key for, um, for bouncing balls, you can see that that curve starts to flatten again. You don't want to do that. You want in your spacing the ball, let's go back to my tool if I can. If that's the spacing, it's going to get bigger and bigger as it drops, just in terms of, of anything that you want to accelerate, a ball, any type of movement, right? So the easiest way to do this, I mean, there, there are different ways. Some people uh, with this here, they break the tangent. So now I can move that tangent separately and won't affect the right one. And what they do is they use weighted tangents and then they scale it all the way in. I'm not a fan of weighted tangents at all. It's a huge pain to work with, especially when you take over a shot from someone else. So what I do is I always break the tangents. So I do it like this. And then basically what you want to do is every time it's at the top, right? If you're looking like this, you're going to flatten the tangents. And here I'm going to break the tangents. And here I'm going to break the tangents. And then that's that. This needs more corrections, obviously. This has, I don't think it has enough, enough bounces. But you want that tangent to be at the curve, even slightly this way. You don't want it below that green line, because then you're going to have an ease in, right? So you're going to have this up here. This is going to be up here. This is going to be slightly up here. And again, it's, I can tell it doesn't have enough bounces, but it's going to leave it at that for now. And you can zoom in a little bit. You can see what's going on. Now, even if with that change, if you look at your bouncing ball, dong, dong. Boom, boom. It's better than before, but it's not great. So if I feel like, well, this probably needs a few more bounces and it gets a bit slow towards the end, what happens is that every time, every time your ball is bouncing and hitting the ground, it's going to lose energy and it's going to bounce less high, but also it's going to take less long. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 frames for bouncing the first bounce, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it's going to be shorter and shorter. You might say, eh, maybe that's not too bad for the first bounce. But then after that, there's a good chance that this needs to be shorter. So I'm going to move all those keys, move that a bit in, so it's definitely getting shorter. 
and I can go in here and you can see that I have in my graph editor, I have more keys than I need to have right now. It's confusing why I suddenly have three keys here. It's because I have everything keyed. So I'm just gonna, you can delete or cut, but I'm just gonna, and I'm so used to cutting and just leave it at that. So I just have this here. I probably want another bounce, maybe after two keys, two keys. Again, you can take this, bring it up a bit higher. I'm going to flatten that and you got to break those tangents and break this one. This one is already broken. Yeah. And every time you do make any changes, you have to kind of reassess how your tangents are. It's kind of okay. It's not great, but I think it's going to feel better. This feels a bit off in terms of time. Definitely going to make this a bit shorter. And you can see that doesn't look right because it needs to be, again, that tangent can't be below that green line. Otherwise, it's going to ease in. If you look at this, your bouncing ball, let's go back. Doom, 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 doom. Not too bad. At the end, too fast. I'm going to take a key here and make that just a bit longer. Boom, 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 boom. Not too bad. I can probably do one more bounce. So let's say two frames, set a key, two frames, set a key, and then this one will be really minimal. So flat, break the tangent, which I already have. And as always, let's break the tangent here, just in case I need to add another bounce. So now you have a basic bouncing ball. It's kind of okay. Again, I'm not worried about any squash and stretch or textures for rotations. So what are you going to do now? I want this to travel left or right. So the blue one here, if you select this here, this is my travel key. So that's your translate Z. I'm going to set a key here. And at the end of the ball, imagine it travels left or right. It's going to go bong, 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 roll, stop. Maybe around here, I'm guessing. I'm going to set a key or you can just move it. It's going to set a key for you, right? That is that. Now, if you do this, it's going to travel very evenly and come to a sudden stop right there because that is a very linear key. So what you want to do is you want to flatten that last one so that it comes to a slow stop like this. You don't want to ease into this. You're going to bring that down and you can bring it down like this. It's going to accelerate and slowly stop. Now, if you watch this, it's not going to accelerate or slow down enough. It's moving It's actually not that bad. <laughs> I was going to say, you might have to set a key here, move this a bit over, spline it, and adjust it like that so that there's enough long time. You can go like this and really give this a very slow ease in. But I think right now for me, it takes too long too. It's going to go bounce, 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 roll, stop. Like to me, at this point, it should probably already stop. And if you want to be extra little picky, your ball can come to a stop, roll back a bit, like overshoot a bit, and then come to another stop. Meaning that at that point here, it might go back a little bit. So what that does here, it's going to go a little bit over, flatten this tangent. And that's, that's a lot. It seems like it's going to roll back a lot, right? Let's zoom in here. What is that stop doing? Yeah, it's good. that stop, it stops too quickly and it rolls back too much. I don't mind how much it rolls back. Let's see. Yeah, it's a bit much. So it should take longer to come to a stop, but not roll back as much. So I'm going to bring this down. And if I look at this key, it might be more like this. So now if I look at the ball, where's the ball? There you go. Doom, 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 doom. Not too bad. Let's full screen this. So that's a comfortable amount of time where the ball is going to come to a stop. It still feels like it's rolling a bit long. Take these keys, bring it back a little bit. Doom, 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 doom. It's a little bit long, but it's fairly comfortable. Now, if you look at the bounces, it works. It's a bit standard, 
you can go into i need to go into uh animation so if i never used maya here you have the different it's, it changes all the tools up here so if i go into animation you can go then visualize and then you can say uh where is this here create edible motion trail and now you can see what those bounces are doing bounce 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 bounce, bounce. i can see with this that this takes longer than this so I'm going to take this key, bring it back. So you can see visually how this is changing, right? And then you have this bounce. Okay, and this feels just a bit off with that. I'm going to take this, bring it down. And after that, it's kind of okay. It's basically you want, for instance, one, two, three, four, five frames until the top. One, two, three, four, five until the end. It's usually, it's safe to bring this to the same length. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's pretty okay. Now, as you move things around, again, you do want to check in your TY how that is affecting your curves. It's not too bad. I don't see anything where the tangent is below the line. But again, it's it's a bit, it's a bit boring in terms of how the bounces work. So if you watch this again. Let's go up here. It's going to bounce, 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 bounce. And that's that. But you can exaggerate the drop where the hang time, so when it's up here, it's a bit longer. And then it drops a bit faster. Up a bit faster, hangs here a bit longer. And you can do this, again, multiple ways. So if you have, let's say, this, I got the first two. Again, you can take this tangent and you can give it weight and then you can pull out those tangents. It's going to change all this. I'm not a fan of that. I just like more control on my own. So I can go here, set a key, bring it up a bit, and then adjust the hang time like this. So same thing. If we go to apex, let's say two frames and then two frames forward, just to make it symmetrical. I don't really mind too much about a huge amount of contrast. You're going to give this longer hang time and I'm going to have a bit more of a sharper drop so that this tangent is not exactly overlapping with that green line. It's going to be slightly above. And whenever you do that, you're going to have to start adjusting a few things in terms of the height. If I do this mindlessly for both, again, you're going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to spline this whole thing, hit this one, and make sure that this one's flat. And this one is a bit more like this and adjust that. It's kind of okay. You can see how it feels like it's going to be okay, but then it kind of travels too much. Again, you're going to have to go back in there and start adjusting so that your tangents are not like this going in or like that. You want to be nicely curved. And that's usually just for a bouncing ball. It's You're not going to have that type of fine tuning in terms of symmetry when it's a character doing something very specific. You want a bit more contrast in your in your timing. So I'm going to keep it like that. Again, this feels a bit weird. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. I have no idea what this is going to look like. I'm guessing it's going to be okay. I'm going to bring this up. Maybe this a bit here. And maybe a bit more like that. Let's watch this. Let's take the graph out. And uh, this is under motion trail. So if I play this now... Doom, 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 doom. See, that feels already different. So that hang time is longer here. Then it suddenly drops. Boom, 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 boom. Do this. Do I need more bounces? Doom, 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 doom. Nah, feels okay. That's not too bad. That to me is your standard and I can have... The grid is grayed out. That is on. My Maya does this. You can... You have the grid on off here as well. You kind of see a bit more of the distance and what is going on there. Don't really need it at this point. So again, you can exaggerate this where I grab this and I want to make the hang time really long. I can grab this out here and it's going to suddenly drop. I want to make that really extreme and bring this up. So this is going to be... You can see how long it holds to a point where it almost, almost travels too long in a straight line where you almost have to start adjusting this a little bit to some degree, right? So if I do this and I do a longer one here, 
Again, I can bring this out one frame, bring this out one frame, whoops, one frame. And then I look at this, does that flatten too much? Maybe. Then it comes to a point where it comes down to your sense of timing. Like how, how does it feel for you? Because there's only so much you can do in terms of, all right, well, let's set more keys, put some asymmetry there, blah, blah, blah. Like as an animator, you really have to go by feel as well. So I'm going to add a bit more hang time here, bring this up. And this feels like really long. This doesn't look right to me already, but let's play it anyway. Eh, kind of okay. Do full screen. It's not too bad. You can probably at this point also accelerate, uh, exaggerate the last ones. All right, if I'm here and you want this, you can also say, all right, exaggerate maybe go a bit higher to flatten these not too much just this definitely a bit more here a bit more here leave the last ones and let's see how this feels you so you can hopefully you see this that the hang time is longer like how long does it stay in the air then the drop is going to be fast and you can see also the timing here and the spacing how the ball starts to accelerate towards the end. It's not massively accelerating towards the end where it doesn't feel like a, like there's a almost like a pop. So if I would go even more, right? Let's exaggerate more. Do this, maybe like that. Really bring this up here and bring this up like that. It might even go like this, maybe just adjust hang time and really bring this to something that's more like that. You're going to start having almost a pop, pop. And that starts to feel too fast. The first two, especially that last one, it just gets too fast on the drop. So you have to be careful in terms of timing here that this doesn't immediately drop like that. So again, to me, I would, I would reduce this in here, reduce it like that. It's all because of this here. And again, you can bring this back a little bit. Maybe bring this back a bit, adjust this a bit. So it's not so crazy. And that is that for a medium bounce, bouncing ball. I would give this again enough time to roll. I still feel this is probably too long. Doom, 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 roll and stop. That's not too bad without rotations. Now, just for those who do want to do uh, squash and stretch, again, you don't have to do for this assignment. This is just in theory, right? So if I bring back a motion trail, and you, I would do this with a rig that has the squash and stretch controls. But just for now, if you have your ball and you have to select your scale, set a key here, it gets into very frame by frame in terms of what you're going to do with those scale keys. But imagine this is your squash and you can't just scale out like this because then it's too big. If you scale out, you have to scale it a bit smaller and then you have to bring this down because it can't hover. And it starts to change your TY when you start adding more keys like that. And even in terms of translates, you have to be very careful once you are uh, start adding squash and stretch. So if, do, if you just do this, and this is why I'm showing it to you, this is wrong because it points down, but it's pointing it should be pointing towards where you're going that's where the motion trail is actually helpful so that you have a little bit of that in there and see you have to key those rotates uh oh my rotates are not keyed there you go so i gotta rotate set a key rotate more like that set a key set a key and it's okay when you go up, same thing here. I want to set a bunch of keys, and that's when you start setting keys on rotations and translates. Not every frame. It depends what you want to do with it. But I want to go up here. Again, you can't just scale like this. You're going to have to point that ball towards where it's going. It's going to stay on that path a bit more, and then it's going to be okay. If you want to go extreme, it can go all the way up. And on the up, it might even squash like this. Like that can sometimes happen, but again, you're going to have to start looking at, well, where is it pointing? And then you start having a few more keys like that. And then it might even 
point like that, and then you want your scale to be uh, back to normal. So one here, one here, and so on into the drop. So if you watch this without the, uh, what did I do here? Motion trail. Shoom, foom, 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 foom. You can see the difference here between a squash and stretch and a no ball. And you also have to look at like how this feels, right? As it goes down, it starts to stretch. This might be already a bit much. Here, stretch. And then you can see how this feels, how suddenly that ball has a slight change and then a squash here and so on. Just It gets very interesting in terms of, of feeling here. To me, I will probably rotate this guy already a bit more into this and start almost leaning the, the, the character, the ball a bit backwards. It gets kind of cute. Sometimes you can really go frame by frame and say, okay, well, I want to have a feeling of this right before the end. Then squash, and then out like this. And even that may be here. So maybe a bit higher. And then you can see how that feels. It gets very weird because you're starting to ease in, right? We have a key here and then down here and then this. This just doesn't feel right. So be careful when you start adding more keys like this. It just starts to really mess things up. And that's the main thing about your bouncing ball. I wouldn't go too crazy with too many keys. I would keep it fairly simple and then adjust the tangents more in terms of timing, right? To change things up. Give this, break your tangent here. Give this a bit more timing like that. Adjust it more like this versus setting too many keys, especially when it comes to moving over. And what I see in some of the, the bouncing balls in your in your reel is when you have the ball bouncing and suddenly like accelerate forward like this, and then it goes down, and then suddenly accelerate again, then you have something like this. Too many keys. And then especially something like this, where it just it just pops and goes down, that's overcomplicating things. So translate, when it moves left or right, should be really simple. Your up and down should be really simple. It's very flat here, but again, in terms of just the look and how it feels. It gets a bit more complicated once you do um, the squash and stretch. But that's also going to look different if you use a rig that has controllers, if that makes sense. So that is the bouncing ball. Medium weight, a couple bounces. Enough time to roll roll back a bit and stop. And again, I wouldn't do a squash and stretch just yet. So just concentrate on the ball. I can take the scale and then delete it. Now, if I change any type of timing, it might look weird because now suddenly I changed the timing, but I took out the squash and stretch. It still kind of works a bit poppy, but I'm going to leave it at that before I confuse you all too much. Hope that makes sense. And I'm going to do one for the bowling ball, which is a lot simpler, and then the beach ball, which just takes a lot longer. And that's it. Questions, let me know. Um, you can just reply to the module post there. And uh, I'm happy to explain more. All right. Thank you.